I was done talking about Bjorn and how he was awesome. And then I already talked about Legolas and all the elves and I talked about Bilbo being badass and yeah. And, uh, and then, then the barrel riding sequence took place. I'm trying to sum this all up. <laughs> I'm trying to remember everything. Not that I didn't remember everything. Holy shit. Anyway, um, so by the time the barrel riding sequence is over, all the dwarves plus one hobbit run into Bard. Played by Luke Evans. I almost forgot his name for a second. Holy shit, thank god it came to my mind quickly. Luke Evans, also known as the other Orlando Bloom, because he kind of looks like the man. But oh my god, Bard! Oh my god! I love Bard. I fucking love Bard. And his family is fucking adorable. I love his family. And turns out, uh, the two daughters, I forgot their names. I forgot their names, I'm sorry. Uh, turns out the two daughters, uh, or actually, um, James Nesbitt, uh, the, the actor who plays, uh, Bofer, the lovable, optimistic Bofer. And uh, everyone loves Bofer in his little hat. I love fucking Bofer! And uh, yeah, it turns out that they're, uh, James Nesbitt's daughters. They are, and they're in the Hobbit film. Anyway, so yeah, uh, uh, Bart's family was adorable. And then they, and Lake Town. I don't care how fucking poor it is, and I don't care how greedy and just corrupt the the master of Lake Town is. I want to fucking live there. It reminds me of fucking Venice, even though I've never been to Venice. I've never been to Venice, but I want to live on Lake Town. I want to live on a fucking lake. Well, maybe, considering how cold it was there and... I'm not very fond of the cold. I'm more of a lukewarm person. I'm not a hot person, I'm not a cold person, I'm in between. I'm a lukewarm. Yeah. Anyway, I, I love Bard. Bard was fucking cool. Lake Town looked amazing. And their time, their, the, the main character's time in Lake Town was entertaining and it was fun. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, oh yeah, I forgot about one major character. Gandalf. Oh my god, I love Gandalf. Gandalf was pretty damn badass in this film. I mean, not that he isn't all the time, he's fucking Gandalf the Grey! Oh my god, I love him! And then there's... Dolgor Do <laughs> My fucking Tolkien names, I'm so s Sorry, Tolkien. Sorry, I respect you, man. May you rest in peace. Dull Gold Door. Blah, 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 the name. And then there's the Necromancer. A.K.A. Sauron. Played by none other than Benedict Cumberbatch. I mean, I could hear his voice in it. And he was speaking in black speech. And oh my god, it was sexy as fuck. Even though I don't like Sauron at all. He's a fucking asshole. I don't like him. He's gonna make Frodo's life hell, and he's sort of starting to make Bilbo's life hell. And he nearly kicked Gandalf's ass, and he actually he kind of did. Which is pretty damn sad. But it's Gandalf. He'll get out of the situation. He will, in the next movie. Which comes out in next, next December. Anyway, so yeah, that was awesome. Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> I'll get to him and Smaug. I'm saving Smaug for last because... We're so awesome! Anyway. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, what else should we get to? So we're in Lake... They're all in Lake Town. And they're trying to get weapons and all the jazz and the shit they have to go through in order to get into the city and into Bard's house. Oh my god. Poor dwarves. Poor Bilbo. You have to go through so much shit in order to get to Erebor. Which I jokingly call Smaug's Bachelor Pad. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Smaug's a fucking pimp. He should be a pimp at least. A 
pimp named Smaug. Come the fuck on. Holy shit. Anyway. So yeah, they're in Lake Town for a bit, and Ke oh yeah, Keely. Keely gets shot with a poisoned arrow, and he ends up staying in uh, Lake Town with uh, Bofer, his brother Feely, and another guy. I'm sorry, there's so many dwarves, and I only know a certain few. I'm sorry, but no offense, Tolkien, that's too damn many dwarves for me to fucking name. I only know Thorin, Bofur, Balin, Dwalin. I already said Bofur, right? Bomber, Feely, Keely. I think I only know seven. Oh no, um, Nori. Ori, Dory, Oin, Gloin. I need one more. I don't know the other one. That's in 12! I need 13! Oh, so close. Oh my god. Oh, Biffer! Is it Biffer? Please tell me I'm right. Please, please tell me it's Biffer. I think I got all the fucking. I think I got all the fucking dwarves. Holy shit. Yeah, I win. I'm sorry, I'm giving myself a round of applause for a second. <laughs> so yeah, as I said, they're in Lake Town for a bit, and they have to go through all this shit, and blah blah blah. So at first they're seen as criminals, and like, oh, the Master of Lake Town is like, me, 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 me. But then they, then they, everyone start, everyone finds out about the prophecy, about how the king uh, under the mountain is going to come back, and slay the dragon, take his gold back, and take his kingdom back, and... And, everyone, and then, and Thorin's like, oh, we're gonna go take back Erebor and all that jazz. And, uh, and then, um, uh, Bard's like, no, if you awaken that beast, you're gonna s get us all screwed. You're gonna kill us all. We're all fucked if you wake up that dragon. And he's like, no, don't enter that mountain. And then Thorin, it becoming an asshole, even though I love him. Not like in that way, fangirl, sorry. I mean, no, don't get me wrong, like, this entire, the part of this entire movie is pretty damn sexy, I mean. Some of these damn actors are pretty damn sexy. But one in particular is the sexiest! And that's Benedict Cumberbatch, and that's my personal opinion, I'm very sorry. I mean, Martin Freeman is pretty damn adorable. I love Martin Freeman, he's definitely Hobbit material, he definitely is, I fucking love him. He's also John Watson. I fucking love John Watson. I can't wait for Sherlock to come back on TV. <gasps> oh my god. More Sherlock. More John Locke for me. But anyway. But. Uh, not right. Never know. But right now. It's The Hobbit right now. So anyway. Um, Thorin's sort of becoming an asshole. That's what happens to dwarves. Dwarves are greedy little bastards. Well, I wouldn't say all of them are greedy bastards, but... It's the nature of the beast. You cannot change it. I say that because that's what it means. You cannot change this person. It's the nature of the beast. Anyway. <clears throat> so, um... The company ends up getting praised and celebrated as heroes because they, uh, the master of Lake Town and everyone else, except Bard, are like, yay, they're gonna slay the dragon, we're all saved, and we'll be rich, and we'll make Eskaroth slash Lake Town big and richer, and I think the master of Lake Town was gonna exploit that money for his own personal gain because he's a fucking asshole! Oh, he's played by Stephen Fry! Yay! And, uh... And Babar's like, oh no, they're gonna, they're gonna kill us all. We're all fucked. Just fuck. That's what he's like. And uh, so they end up going to the mountain, all dressed up and crap at first. I mean, Bilbo has this nice little hat. I'm like, oh, Bilbo, you look so fucking cute. I love Bilbo. I fucking love Bilbo. I wasn't seeing it. Anyway. <clears throat> Um, so they end up going to the mountain, and that's where I start getting a little giddy, because you know, you guys know, the primary reason why I wanted to see the fucking movie is Schmaug. I 
shake, sh I shake, smog. I shake, smog. I get to see my smoggy. But we're not there yet. They get to the door, the hidden door, and everything turns out, it seems hopeless at first, and I'm wondering, how the fuck are they gonna get inside if the last light of Durin's day disappeared? But Bilbo finds out it's not the sunlight, it's the fucking moonlight. It's the last light of the day. The day does not pertain to daylight knowledge, the day pertains to the current time. The day before the moon sets and the sun rises for the next day. So it turns out the moonlight is the one, is the light that shines on the door and Ruby gets the keyhole. And they open the door. It turns out to be a tiny ass door. And, well, not tiny ass, but pfft, you know what I mean. And, there are, and then the dwarves have, particularly uh, Thorin and uh, Balin, have this little sad, nostalgic moment of being like, Oh, we're finally back in Erebor. We're here again after all these years. And they start crying a little bit, and I, I, I'm, I'm starting to get, feel the feels. I'm like, oh, the feels, the feels! Because I understand how they feel like to be in wandering for so long and having no home and having your, having fucking everything taken away from you by a big asshole of a dragon. But yeah, he is an asshole, but. There are other things about him that are not particularly bad. At least in my opinion. In this universe, there are good things about the dragon. In their universe, they're like, Fuck you, dragon. You are horrible as fuck. And we hate you. And we want to kill you. Here, we're like, Badass dragon. Has a voice that gives that makes boys and girls swoon. I'm not kidding. Smaug, Smaug makes some men question their sexuality. <laughs> Damn, Smaug. Damn. <laughs> At least in our world, not their world. <laughs> anyway, um, so they're finally back in Erebor, and that's where Bilbo comes into play's part. And... He's sent in all alone by his merry self to go find the Arkenstone. And that turns out not, that doesn't work out so well because it's a, it's the treasure that's, that the dwarves had and that Smaug plundered. It's so vast, so fucking huge that he's like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. How the hell am I going to find this one giant, well it's not a giant, giant, white stone among all this shit. And there are, and there are a ton of white, large white stones in there, but the Argus in particular is that, that, that ethereal, pretty glow on it. Initially I did not think it was white, I thought it was blue. Not blue blue, but blue. Like a faded blue. But no, it's white, so. And then, so he's looking around, and then meanwhile... Keely's on the verge of dying, and all this crazy fighting goes on with orcs and uh, Bulg, who I think is Azog's son, but I don't know what the hell he is. He, all I know, he's an ugly dwarf. Oh, and uh, Azog didn't get much in this movie. And Thrain didn't make an appearance either, so that's... Assumedly, anyway, or supposedly a deleted scene that was shown in the trailer. So some things they took out and some things they kept in. So. Anyway, so yeah, so there's Bolg and he starts attacking people and they're after the dwarves, of course. And then that's where Legolas and Toriel come back in. And as all this fighting ensues, uh, Bilbo's looking for the Arkenstone and while he does, <clears throat> while he does so, he begins to wake up Smaug, which Balin told him not to do. But it's not like it was his intention to do so. And sadly, I'm going to have to finish this part in the next video. Fucking hell. Uh, yeah. <laughs>